Hi there, I'm Andy Malone. I'm a Microsoft MVP as well as a Microsoft Certified Trainer. In this week's episode of All You Need to Know, we're going to take a look at Microsoft Exchange Online. What started a number of years ago was Microsoft Mail evolved into a, one of the most popular and most famous uh, email management platforms. But now, of course, it's part of Microsoft 365 and it's all online. But how does it work? Well, stick with me and we'll take a look. So I'm kicking off in the Microsoft 365 Admin Center and we're going to click on show all and you can see that we have a number of different admin centers. So one of the centers that we have is Microsoft Exchange and uh, here it is here. Now currently there are two versions of Microsoft Exchange. So if I go ahead and I click on this uh, admin center, uh, this actually takes me to the old admin center. So this is the kind of the legacy admin center that's been around uh, for a number of years. So if you're familiar with Exchange Server, um, you'll be very familiar with this interface. We've had this interface uh, for some time. So it was starting to look a little bit tired. So what we now have is, as you can see, you can try the new admin center. Now, this is currently, it's in beta. And what beta means is it's not entirely finished. So for example, there are, it, they've, they've done a, a number of features, but if I go into more features here, you can see that we still have a number of um, features that still link back to the old portal. So, um, and eventually in time when the, this is all completed, there won't be a menu option there. It says more features because uh, everything will be uh, in the menus. But for now, I'm going to stick with the new because this is new. I'm going to go to the home screen. And again, we can, uh, what we see here are these tiles. Now, uh, again, because this is test, um, software. There's nothing actually in here because I've not really kind of sent any mails. But these tiles are very familiar to you if, if you're in uh, Microsoft 365. So you can see that they're here in Microsoft 365. I can customize them. I can move them around um, and they provide me with lots and lots of information. Um, I can uh, come up here uh, I can add in a card if I want to. There are a number of cards offering me different features and functionality. So Exchange, SharePoint, Teams, the idea is that eventually they will have something very, very similar. Uh, again, at the moment, there's not really that much here, but it is coming. So um, what we're going to do is the first thing that you need to do in 365 is obviously have a recipient and you can create uh, recipients in one of two ways. Of course, um, just to remind you, uh, I will go ahead and I will create a user. So when you create a user in 365, it also creates a mailbox for that user. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to create a new user and I'm going to call my user. I'll call her uh, Ann Smith. Okay, so I'm going to call her. Oh, sorry, didn't mean to put that in there. So I'm going to call her Ann Smith, uh, a good familiar name. So when I click in, it puts Ann Smith, and again, I'll put in Smith A as a username. And you can see that it's using my tenant dot on microsoft.com now this might be different for you if you're using your real domain name of course now in terms of the password do you want to auto generate or let me create the password you know I'm quite happy I'm just going to go ahead and uh, accept that you can see that we have this metro line system so you can just click on next and now it says okay do you want to go ahead and assign a license to this user Okay, I think so. I'm going to go ahead and assign an E5 license. And I'm also going to do the enterprise mobility and security for E5. Okay, uh, I'm going to click on next. Um, I could put in some other information. So if, for example, if I want the user to, to be an administrator, I can make them uh, one of these different administrator roles. And if you want to know more about that, of course, I have other videos uh, on here. Um, you can also put some profile information in for this particular user. Job title, office. This is quite useful for things like departments. 
Um, you know, I could put in a city here, for example, wherever they're located. Um, I won't bother with that just now. So once I've finished, I can click on finish adding. And now that I've added that user, it says, hey, do you want to save this user as a template? So any of the settings that I'll have just created, it will let me create that user. For the purpose of this demo, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to say, yep, yeah, close. I'm happy with that user. Now, if I, you can see here that Anne has come in, I can click on Anne's account and you can see that she's a fully licensed account. I can uh, see information on her account. I can see when she's last signed in, signed out of uh, 365. Um, I can see her office if she's uh, assigned Microsoft Office. I can even set up, uh, one of the things you should definitely set up is multi-factor authentication. That means you're not just logging on with a username and password, you're logging on with a device. So your mobile mobile phone. Um, I can click into the mail tab. Now at the moment, um, this is a brand new user. So um, the data center is currently creating a mailbox for this user. So it can take a little bit, uh, a few minutes uh, of time. But eventually that mail information will come in. Um, and then she'll be able to log on and get access to a mail. So that's creating the user. So as I've mentioned, when you create the user, it also creates a mailbox. So here in Microsoft Exchange, we have what we call recipients. Now we currently have three types of recipients in Exchange mailboxes. So these are all the mailboxes that I've just created. And eventually Anne will appear here uh, when, the, when they're creating. I can just um, refresh this page and just see if she turns up. It can take a little bit of time. Um, so I'll just go in and um, no, she's not there yet. So I'll just use another one as a demo. So what we have here is if I uh, scroll down, you can see, anyway, we have a number of mailboxes here. And I'm going to go, I've got a user here called Alex. So let's just have a look at Alex's mailbox. Now, um, by default, when you uh, click onto this, you can see it brings up Alex's properties uh, on the right hand side here. Again, I can uh, zoom into those properties if I want to here. So we can see that you can uh, see that Alex has got an email address, he's got the mail flow settings, his uh, mailbox policies, permissions, and so on. So let's have a look at some of these settings. Um, you'll also see that you can not just manage Alex's account here uh, or mailbox, but I can also um, see his account information. So anything that I would have put in that contact card, you know, the when I created that user, that would come in here. And again, I can change that contact information and it's linked uh, to Azure Active Directory, which is our directory service, of course. So um, again, I can manage my address types. Now you can see here, first of all, we have a number of addresses. The main one that you're gonna be interested in is this one here. This is called an SMTP or Simple Mail Transfer Protocol address. In other words, your regular email address. This is sometimes also referred to as a UPN, a user principal name, okay? Uh, again, we can edit this, we can change it. But you'll also notice that we have other addresses in here as well. And these are, for example, this particular user has an E5 license. So he's activated for um, Teams, Microsoft Teams. So he can make phone calls in Microsoft Teams. Uh, SharePoint Online will also give him an, an address as well. But the main one that we're interested in, as I said, is the SMTP address. Now, the other thing that we got here is you can also set mailbox permissions for this particular delegate. So um, does this, um, do you want another user to manage Alex's mailbox? So this can be quite useful if Alex has got an assistant, let's say. So we can add in Alex's assistant in here. So typically we have three settings here. One is read and manage, which just means he can read Alex's email and manage it. Um, send as is where we can actually send as Alex. 
So for example, if I have an assistant, let's say I've got an assistant called uh, Megan. So I can bring in um, Megan in here. Um, oops, sorry, my mistake. Uh, I will click on add permission. So I'll choose another one, I'll choose Adele. Let's say Adele is Alex's assistant. Um, I can click on this uh, and I'll click on close. So Alex, uh, Adele has now got that uh, permission, okay? So I can add in another permission if I want to, all right? Um, so I can say, okay, um, do I want to bring in any use, other users? So at the moment, I don't. So you can see that uh, you've got, as I said, read and manage, send as. This is where you can actually send as. So um, this is where Adele could actually act as Alex. So when you receive an email from Alex, it looks like it is coming from Alex, even though Adele has sent it. We also have this one as well, sent on behalf of. So again, this is Adele sending on behalf of Alex, okay? Again, many, many companies use that. That's what we mean by mailbox delegation. Um, the other thing that we've got here is your um, mail flow settings. So this is quite useful. Um, for example, if you want to, you know, if, if somebody's left the company, um, so let's say Alex is leaving the company and he want you want to forward any email for Alex to another user. So let's say Joe is going to take over Alex's job. You can forward Alex's email to Joe from here. Message size restrictions by default. This is set to thir just over 35 megabytes, but you can increase this to a maximum in 365 of 150 megabytes. So again, this means the attachments that you send to mail, um, again, it's the, the maximum minimum size uh, sending and receiving. So that's quite useful. Um, do you want to set up any message delivery restrictions? So again, delivery restrictions, um, mail flow settings for Alex. So can Alex send to everybody? Or can Alex only send to specific people? For example, this might be useful in a school, let's say. So you've got the teachers, you've got the kids. You may only want the kids to be able to send to certain email addresses, for example. Um, check if senders are authenticated. So again, um, has, these, has the sender been authenticated? Is it a genuine user? Um, this prevents things like spamming and so on. Um, you can also, this is called a whitelist or a blacklist, so you can block messages from a specific user as well. So if there are specific users that you want to block email, uh, you can do that. So that's what we mean by delivery restrictions. Okay. Um, the next one is more actions. Um, now this is quite a useful one. You can convert Alex's mailbox to be what we call a shared mailbox. So let's say Alex is a salesman and Alex is leaving the company. Um, what you can do is you can convert this to be a shared mailbox and basically um, anyone, you can then assign anyone in Alex's team to get access to this mailbox. So anybody who can see the shared mailbox can access Alex's mail uh, and follow up any customers. Um, litigation hold is um, if, let's say, for example, Alex is, you suspect Alex has been up to no good or for maybe just a compliance or a legal reason, you want to put the, the mailbox on hold. What this does is it mail continues to flow quite normally. However, um, it prevents the user from deleting messaging so or deleting anything. So. Uh, when the user deletes any mail, so for example, if they're trying to remove any evidence, it goes into the recycle bin and the recycle bin is never emptied. Okay. Um, archiving. So archiving, um, you can, um, instead of um, having, um, let's say, an inbox which is crammed to the hilt with, with content, you can create an archive for Alex. And what this does is it's an additional folder. Um, so if Alex wants to kind of 
permanently save anything. It can go into his archive for long term. You can see that Alex's archive is actually on by default. Um, you can um, set a recipient limit for Alex. So uh, by default, we have maximum number of recipients is 500 there. So again, that would kind of stop spamming. Um, so if you're sending a, a, a mail merge or something like that. Um, other interesting things here, you've got uh, email apps. So what's the default app that Alex is using? Um, so really the main thing here would be, you could say, I want him to use Outlook on the web. Um, I want him to use the Outlook client for the desktop, uh, the Exchange web services, but you may not want some of these older ones. And the reason for that is, because these support multi-factor authentication, whereas these options really only support usernames and passwords. And the problem is, of course, if you know your username and password, it doesn't prove who you are. Again, I would urge you to have a look at my conditional access session on here. This, that explains this uh, in a lot more detail. Okay, so I've updated that. Um, um, mailbox policies. So I can configure a mailbox policy for this user. So um, you can see that we've got the sharing policy, um, the role assignment policy. I can uh, change this retention policy. You don't change these here, here by the way. Um, so you, you basically set up what we call a mailbox retention policy. Um, now I've set up one previously. Um, so um, again, I'm gonna, I've covered retention policies on a video um, in YouTube. So I created um, a company retention policy. So for perhaps maybe, you know, you can set up what we call mail tags. So if I receive a, an email from the tax office, I have to save that mail for let's say seven years or something like that because it's compliance. So you can customize labeling there. So I've set up um, the uh, company mailbox retention policy. Um, so that's that. Those, so those are the policies. Um, it also tells me Alex's mailbox usage. So when he last logged on, this is quite useful because um, if the if the user doesn't hardly ever use his mail, or maybe it's an old account or a stale account, you could be paying for a, a three sixty five account that you might, you know, nobody's using. So again, that can be quite useful. Alrighty, so that is the user settings there. Okay, now uh, again, I can share, uh, I can have a shared mailbox and assign that shared mailbox to a multiple users. And again, that's useful, let's say in a, a, a combined depart, uh, department. Now the other type of mailboxes that you get, you can also have a room mailbox or a, a resource mailbox. This is fantastic for things like conference rooms or pieces of equipment. Um, and again, the nice thing about this is you don't need a license for these, um, but they're they're pretty useful. Um, basically, there's not much to them really. They just get an email address, but the nice thing is you can schedule meetings in them. Um, so you can schedule resources and manage delegates. Um, this is used uh, also in Microsoft Teams. Okay. Um, the other thing that we've got, of course, are contacts. And these are external contacts within our organization. So these uh, are not within our organization. Though, you know, customers, um, suppliers, people like that, that you want to appear in the GAL. And that the GAL is the global address list. So when I click into Outlook, click on new email, you get a list of uh, people. That's the GAL. That's the global address list. OK, so you can have external contents there. Um, other things you can also, we've got uh, mail flow here. So we can control how mail flows in and out of the organization. And you've got b remote domains. So are there any restrictions on who I can uh, connect to? You can see here, there's like a little star um, and in fact accepted and remote domains. Uh, so it means basically I can send to anybody, okay? Accepted domains, um, again, uh, by default, I'm just accepting mail from my 
own domain at the moment, but if you had multiple divisions in your company, they may have separate uh, addressing and you can add those here. Um, you can also have what we call connectors. Oops, just wait for that to come back. Oops. So again, I did say this was beta software. So you can also have what we call connectors and connectors can connect exchange to other uh, mail systems. So for example, not just Office 365, but other internal mail servers are indeed a partner organization. And again, you just click on this and you basically just go through the wizard and it walks you through the whole thing. Um, the next thing then is message trace. Again, coming soon, it's not here. Message trace is a tracking feature. So it's used for troubleshooting. So uh, you can put a uh, user, um, you know, an external username and, and it will track and trace message. So show me all the me email from Bob Kelly between Monday to Friday. Okay. Um, one thing I really do like about this new admin center is we now have a new migration tool and they call it new migration batch. Um, because there is a command line tool as part of Exchange. It's called PowerShell, so the Exchange version of PowerShell. And I can go through this really nice little wizard and I can say, hey, do I want, am I migrating users in from another platform? Am I migrating in or am I migrating out of Exchange? So you basically give the job a name, so I'll just call this job one. Um, I'm migrating to Exchange, and again, I just follow this metro line. So I choose what type of email it is. So again, is it uh, coming from Google? Is it coming from uh, a remote move? That means it's an on-premises Exchange server. Um, and that mean, that's a, what we call a hybrid. That's a very large organization. These staged and cutover migrations are really designed for small businesses. Okay, um, so again, I'm, I'm planning to cover this in, a, in another session. Um, however, more details on Microsoft uh, Exchange onboarding into 365, check out docs.microsoft.com. There's plenty of guides uh, there to do that. The other thing that's in here as well is reports. So you can, there are lots of reports for administrators. Um, so again, there's uh, different types of reports and there's also reports for migration. As I say, you'll find that these features will fill out in the next, um, in the next few months. Now you can of course go back at any point to the classic admin center. So this is the classic administration center. And again, here's Alex's account. Again, I double click his account and you pretty much you can see everything that we looked at previously is here, okay? But again, if you're familiar with Exchange Server, then this is identical to Exchange Server, okay? Um, actually, I do prefer the new interface. I'm getting quite used to it. Okay, so there you have it. Just a little flavor of Exchange and creating users, creating mailboxes. I hope it's uh, enough to get you started. So there you have it, Microsoft Exchange Online. Not only does it provide email, calendaring, but it also provides all the chat functions for other products like Microsoft Teams. I hope you find this uh, session interesting and useful. Remember, if you have, click on that subscribe button and don't miss future postings. Until next time, I'm Andy Malone. You take care.